One of the most important aspects of modern medicine is to draw from the best available research evidence, understand the relative merits uh, and downsides of available alternatives, and use that information to um, figure out how do we help the patient. One of the disappointments in doing that work is one finds that uh, the answers that have been sought may not relate to the kinds of dilemmas patients are facing in terms of, um, for instance, quality and duration of life, but also looking at practical issues that might bear on deciding which alternative is preferable. When research focuses on being patient-centered, what it's trying to do is become more pertinent to and more helpful to the task of deciding how best to respond to the patient's situation. Comparative effectiveness research uh, brings that one step further, and that is understanding or estimating uh, how well does one alternative work compared to the other. One of the ways in which uh, we have been trying to help patients and clinicians make uh, better decisions have been by developing shared decision-making tools. These are tools that take that evidence and re-express it in a way that actually helps uh, those conversations that patients and clinicians are having to try to figure out what to do. I have a patient who was wondering about how to manage um, uh, his diabetes. We had used one of our shared decision-making tools to help the patient understand that there are nine different drug classes from which he could choose. He noticed that uh, these alternatives uh, varied not only in terms of their cost uh, or their ability to lower blood sugar, but for instance, one factor that, diff that made them different was the, their effect on weight. This man surprised us when he said, well, the most important thing for me right now is to, um, is to see if I could lose weight. In knowing that, it was uh, easy then to identify within our nine different diabetes drugs which one would be helpful to him in losing weight. So the first barrier that I think we, have, we need to overcome is the illusion that we actually have the evidence that we need. People have thought that up to this point, when clinical trials reported their results, they were actually getting the answer that they were needing without noticing that there's a lot of extrapolation, a lot of extension of the answers that the trials were, were offering. Compared to effectiveness research has been very rare and the me direct measure of uh, patient-important outcomes in clinical trials have been very unusual. Our group actually did a study a few years back looking at diabetes trials, and we, look, we found out that about only one in five uh, trials uh, looking at treatments of diabetes ever measured anything related to the patient's quality of life. What we have to do is to assume that if people's sugars were coming down, their quality of life would go up. And of course, that uh, does not take into account the direct effect of administering and using those medications may have on quality of life itself. With investments in patient-centered outcomes uh, research, like PCORI, I think we're in a better position now to draw from that evidence, um, as we draw from our own exper experience and the patient's experience and expertise, to come up with decisions that can be implemented in the lives of busy people.